All right, welcome back to another one of the chemistry videos for the topics that we talk about here in our chemistry classes. Uh, this one's looking at the specific types of stoichiometry problems. We have three different types that we use in our class. We're going to look at a couple for each type. To start, we're going to begin with mass-to-mass -mass problems, and that's where we start with a mass and we finish with a mass. And to make that conversion happen, we need to use the molar mass in grams off of the periodic table. So in the bottom left-hand corner, it's telling you uh, what that top left box is. That's going to be the value that we know. And then we're going to get to moles. That's always our second step, or our first step to see it to moles. Moles is the goals on these problems. And we're going to do that using the molar mass in grams by looking at the formula of either the atom or of the compound and using the periodic table to, to decide how heavy that formula is. Our second step is always going to be to stack our moles. And when we're stacking our moles, we're going to use the coefficients to create a mole ratio. That gets us from chemical A to chemical B. And then to finish, we're going to go from moles of chemical B up to grams of chemical B using, again, the molar mass in grams of that substance. So here is an example problem of a mass-to-mass -mass problem. Take a look at this one. When we do these math problems, we want to ID what we know. So this one happens to tell us 61.5 grams. It's telling us potassium chlorate. One of the things I'd like you to do when you're doing these problems is to write down what we know underneath the appropriate substance in the chemical equation. That tells me that you can uh, correctly ID which formula you're supposed to use right here. Then it says how. Uh, so right here is my question word, and it says grams. That's attached to my question word, so I'm going to question mark that. And it says oxygen, so I'm going to write down question mark grams. And again, I'm going to do that underneath the balanced chemical equation. When I'm setting up these factor label grids, you're going to need plenty of space to do this. We always start with what we know, so the 61.25 grams of potassium chlorate go in the top left box. And I need to make grams go away, and then I'm trying to get to moles. And I can go from grams to moles, that's a mole fact, off a of mole hill. And this is one mole of potassium chlorate. And then I need to know how heavy potassium chlorate is, so I'd use my periodic table, look up potassium, 39.1. Um, chlorine 35.45, oxygen is uh, 16 times 3. That gives me 122.55 grams. The grams of potassium chlorate go away. Now I'm in moles, but I want to go from moles to moles, so here's my mole ratio step. So moles of my first chemicals, so that was called A in our generic formula, going to moles of chemical B, which is going to be oxygen in this case. And here I use my mole ratios from my coefficients. So the number in front of KClO3, and that's on the bottom, is a 2. The number in front of oxygen is a 3, giving me a 3 over 2 mole ratio. Moles of potassium chlorate go away. Now I'm in the correct chemical. I'm in the wrong unit since I want to get to grams. To get to grams, I need moles to go away, so I put that on the bottom. And I can go to grams because this is a mole fact that's on mole hill or one of your mole facts. Anytime I have moles stacked with something that's not moles, one mole of O2, I can put a 1 in front of moles. Um, so then for grams, I'd use oxygen. Oxygen is 16, and there's two copies. That gets me up to 32. Moles goes away. Plugging this in my calculator, 61.25. I can omit the 1 times 3 times 32. Divide by in parentheses, 122.55 times 2. Close my parentheses. That will give me 23.99 grams. And we do now need to list the chemical as well. You box it answer so we can find that when we're done. So that was a mass to mass example. Moving on, we have mass to volume or volume to mass. This is the first page of this because if we were given a mass and we needed to find a volume, uh, we would use the value that we know in our top left box, use the molar mass to get to moles, then our mole ratio using our coefficients, going from chemical A to chemical B, and then to get to liters, we need to use 22.4 liters of that gas. The second variety of the setup is if a volume is provided, I would take what I know, put it in my top left box, use 22.4 liters is equal to one mole because it's always going to be 22.4 liters uh, underneath standard conditions. Going from chemical A to chemical B, we'd use the mole ratio from our coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. And then to get to grams, we would use the molar mass in grams of that substance. So here is uh, a set of example problems for a mass to volume and a volume to mass stoichiometry problem. Take a look.
So like the previous problem, we need to ID what we know. A student places 45 grams of barium carbonate into a blast furnace. So here's what I know, 45 grams of barium carbonate, that's right here. So I will write that down, 45 grams. And then it says, how many liters? So here's my question word, liters. So I need to find the chemical that's being discussed. So a question mark, liters in this case. When I'm setting up my factorable grid, I'm always gonna start out with what I know. What I know is 45 grams. <clears throat> that's of barium carbonate. It's good to keep track of these formulas while we're doing these problems. I need grams to cross off, so I'm going to put grams on the bottom. And in order to go from grams up to moles, and this is a mole fact, I would need to look up barium and carbon and oxygen on the periodic table, and I can find out that that weighs 197.34 grams. And any time we have moles stacked with something that's not moles, it's one. And that's one mole of barium carbonate. So my grams of barium carbonate will go away. Moving forward, I have uh, a mole ratio step, so moles over moles. Moles of chemical A would be on the bottom, so that's what I'm starting out with. And in this case, the coefficient in front of barium carbonate is a 1. In front of CO2 is a 1 as well, so that's a 1 to 1 mole ratio. I'm using my balanced chemical equation to figure that out. And my last step is to get to liters. So I need moles to go away again. And I'm going moles of CO2 to liters of CO2. Anytime I have moles stacked with something that's not moles, moles with liters, I can put a 1 in front of the moles. And then liters, this is a mole fact, is 22.4. Moles of CO2 go away. Doing my math, 45 times 22.4 divided by 197.34 would give me to three sig figs from the 45.0, 5.11 liters, and then that's of CO2 gas. So that's a mass to volume stoichiometry problem. This is an example of a volume to mass stoichiometry problem. If I read the text of my problem, I have 11.2 liters of oxygen gas. Oxygen's right here, so I will write down 11.2 liters underneath it. And then I can read through the text of my problem and find out that it says how, so question mark, many grams of aluminum oxide. So question mark, grams, right there. We're going to always start out with what I know. So 11.2 liters of O2 gas goes in my top left box. I need L to go away, so I'm putting it on the bottom. And then my first step is to get to moles. So moles and liters are related by one mole of O2 is equal to 22.4 liters. This is a mole fact coming off of my mole hill or a mole statement that we already know. Now that I'm in moles, that's good because I can compare moles to moles. So that's giving me my mole ratio step. So moles of O2 can be compared to moles of aluminum oxide. And here is my mole ratio of a 3 and a 2. So the 3 is in front of O2, so I'm just going to be careful where I put that. So 3 goes on the bottom. And then a 2 is in front of the aluminum oxide, so that goes in the top. My moles of O2 are uh, successfully crossed off, which means I went from chemical A to chemical B. Now I need to get rid of moles because I'm looking for the unit in the text of my problem, which is grams. Anytime I have moles stacked with something that's not moles, it's 1. And for grams, it's going to be 101.96. I'm using my periodic table to add up aluminum times 2, oxygen times 3, giving me 101.96. Plugging this into my calculator, I would do 11.2 times 2 times 101.96. Divide by, in parentheses, 22.4 times 3, close my parentheses, hit equals, and to three sig figs because of the 11.2, my calculator tells me 34.0 grams of aluminum oxide. 34, let me rewrite that a little nicer. And that would be our answer. We'd box our answer so it's easy to find. So that was an example of a volume to mass stoic problem. So you just saw a mass to volume and a volume to mass example. Let's move on to a volume to volume problem. These ones are very quick because we don't need to use the periodic table to look up any numbers. We're going to still start out with what we know in the top left box. Our mole conversion is going to be going from 22.4 moles to 1 mole. 
and uh, we're getting the moles. That's always our first step. Moles is the goals. Then we're going to stack our moles using the coefficients going from moles of A to moles of B. And then we're going to finish by getting back into liters, and that's going to be 22.4 liters because it's always 22.4 liters. So I do have a volume to volume uh, example problem. Let's take a look at that one. So this is a volume to volume stoic problem uh, where I'm being told I have 12.0 liters of H2 gas. I'm going to ID that. And it says hydrogen gas, so I need to find that in my equation. So 12 liters of hydrogen gas is combined with nitrogen gas to form an H3. How many? So there's my question word. I got to make sure I can read these. Looking for my question word and looking for the unit that's attached to it, liters of ammonia. So question mark, liters of ammonia. This is ammonia. So I needed to make sure I figured out which gas I needed to find information about in H3. I'm going to always start out with what I know. Let me start that line again. That was awful. I start out with what I know. So I have 12 liters of H2 gas. I need liters of H2 to go away, so it's going to go on the bottom. And I'm trying to get to moles, because the first step is always to get to moles. Moles is the goals. Moles stacked with something that's not moles is a 1. And then 22.4 is always my conversion. As long as we're at standard temperature and pressure, and for our problems, we are. Then I need to do a mole ratio. So moles over moles, stack your moles. Moles of chemical A, which is H2, goes to moles of chemical B, which is NH3. And to put my numbers here, these are the coefficients from my mole ratios. So in front of H2, I have a 3, so I need to make sure I carefully read that in my, my grid here. And then I have NH3, there's two copies, so that goes on the top. Moles go away. So now we're in the right chemical, but we are in the wrong unit. So I need moles to cancel off, because I'm going for liters of NH3. That's what the text asks me to find. Anytime I have moles stacked with something that's not moles, it's going to be 1. And then it's going to be 22.4 liters, because that's the mole fact off a of mole hill. Math-wise, uh, 12 times 2 times 22.4 divide by, in parentheses, 22.4 times 3. Or if you're keeping track, uh, algebraically, this and this, since they're the same, cancel. So 12 times 2 divided by 3 in my calculator gives me 8 liters, but I need to have three sig figs, so I need to add two zeros. Your calculator only gives you eight, but you need to recognize that 12.0 has three, so you need to add zeros to the end of that number. Box that so we can find it, make it pop out of your work, and that was a volume to volume math problem. So you've just seen four example problems of how to do stoichiometry uh, in our chemistry class. Remember that the first step is to get to moles. Then do a mole ratio using the coefficients from your balanced chemical equation. Then get to the, to the unit in the text of the problem. Remember when we're getting to moles, we're going to either use the molar mass in grams using the periodic table to calculate that, or we're using 22.4 liters is equal to one mole. And then to finish our problems, again, we're using the molar mass in grams in our periodic, or we're using 22.4 liters. I hope that helps. Good luck while you work on these problems.